today we're doing an experiment involving a bouncy ball, dropping it from one meter high into a meter high. We're going to see how much energy is lost per bounce. Let's start with the two meter drop. Here, the ball is dropped. Now let's have a closer look. As you can see, the ball bounces back up to 1.6 meters. That's a 0.4 meter difference. So the percent decrease equals the change in energy over the initial energy. Luckily for us, the mass of the ball and gravity are the same throughout the equation. So the percent decrease in energy equals the difference in height over the initial height. So 2 minus 1.6 all over 2 equals 20%. Since that was so much fun, now we're going to drop the ball for one meter. Now the ball is dropped. Now let's have a closer look. Now as you can see, the ball returns to 0.86 meters. Using the same equation as before, we calculated that the percent decrease equals 14%. So now we're calculating the spring constant of the bouncing ball. Just kidding. So in conclusion, the 2 meter drop had a 20% decrease, and the 1 meter drop had a 14% decrease. So, the 1 meter drop is more efficient. In this section, we're going to look at the physics of pool. Personally, I hate pool. As you know, a pool game is started with a break. This is when the cue ball is shot at 15 other balls from 1 meter away. Let's calculate the energy we put into this shot. To calculate the velocity, first we calculated the time. As you can see, the ball took 0.27 seconds to cross a meter. Using the equation, average velocity equals distance over time. One meter divided by 0.27 seconds equals 3.7 meters per second. The total energy of the cue ball equals 1 half mv squared plus 1 half i omega squared. The rotational inertia of a sphere is 2 fifths mr squared. After some simplification, you get 7 tenths mv squared. After plugging in our mass values and velocity values, we get the total energy to be 1.65 joules. In the shot, momentum in the X and Y is conserved. The cue ball transfers its momentum into the blue ball, which then transfers its momentum into both strike balls. In the whole system, Y momentum is the same. The Y momentum of the two strike balls equals the Y momentum of the cue ball. The combined X momentum in the two strike balls is zero because there is no initial X momentum in the cue ball. Here's a problem to test your knowledge. Watch this next shot closely. In this shot, disregarding friction, what is conserved? A. Ducks B. Cheese C. The Batman symbol or D. Abraham Lincoln Oh wait, and E. Momentum No, Brett. It is not C, the Batman symbol. It's A, I mean E, momentum. Oh, hey man. Oh, hey Ben. Oh, so what's on your mind? Well, I was wondering, what's the rotational inertia of a tire? <laughs> I've got a great idea. Let's find out. Great. Tire rolling is an amazing sport. It encompasses skill, speed, and strength. The ancient Incan civilization once called it Ichi Fiji, but it is known today as tire rolling. First, we'll measure the angle of our ramp. We use a level to measure the inclination of the ramp. It turns out to be 10 degrees. Now we'll measure the hypotenuse of the ramp. That's 43.3 meters. Also, the mass of the tire comes out to be 13 kilograms. 
We measure the radius to be 0.36 meters. Now let's measure the time for the tire to roll all the way down the ramp. It's rolling. It's rolling. It's going for the pull. Wait, it missed it. That's 10.91 seconds, a world record. Yay! Since this is constant acceleration, the average velocity equals distance over time. That's 43.3 meters over 10.91 seconds, which comes out to about 4 meters per second. If we multiply the average velocity by 2, we get the velocity at the bottom of the ramp, which is 8 meters per second. We calculate the height of the ramp by using the equation sine theta equals the height over the hypotenuse. So the hypotenuse times sine theta equals the height. We put the numbers we recently calculated into our equation and we come out with a height of 7.5 meters. We start out with E initial equals E final. So the potential energy at the top of the ramp equals the rotational kinetic energy plus the translational kinetic energy at the bottom of the ramp. This comes out to mgh equals 1 half i omega squared plus 1 half mv squared. We multiply everything by 2 to get rid of fractions then subtract mv squared from both sides of the equation. To isolate i, we divide everything by v squared over r squared, which gives us the final equation. The rotational inertia equals 2 mgh r squared minus mv squared r squared all over v squared. We plug in our numbers for this and we get 2.18 kilograms meters squared. Hey man, hey man! I just figured out the rotational inertia of a tire! Wow, what is it? It's 2.18 kilogram meters squared! Wow, that's very helpful. Yeah! That was so much fun. We're gonna drop you now. <laughs> in this shot, momentum in the X and the Y is consumed. We put the numbers in for the. We, we put the. We put. What do we put? <laughs> <laughs>